Hello everyone. Today, we are going to make a try-it-yourself editor using only HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in less than 20 minutes. So you've definitely seen something like this before. Code Academy, Free Code Camp, W3 Schools, any of those code tutorial websites. On the left, you have a text editor where you can type your code and it displays the resulting text on the right. So if we say, hello, we're gonna display it in red on the right. All right, let's get started. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's get started. All I have done so far is create an empty folder and open up VS Code. The first thing we need to do is create two files, an index uh, HTML file and a CSS file. And let's just save that in our parent folder. To make it easier, I'm gonna split the screen so I can see my index.html on my left and my style.css on the right. Perfect. So the first thing I like to do is uh, write the HTML, then write the CSS, then write the JavaScript. It just helps keep me organized. So to start the HTML, we need an HTML tag. And inside of that tag, we need a head, and inside here, we're going to put our title and we can title it, uh, let's say, let's call it Try It Yourself. And now let's link to this style.css file we just created. So link style sheet. href, and since it's in the same folder, you know, it's just style.css. Perfect. Now let's add some bootstrap in just to make it look a little bit nicer. So to add bootstrap, we just need to go to bootstrap's website and under the quick start, just copy this uh, link. Just gonna click copy and we're gonna go back and paste it in our head. Awesome. Let's save this. So now that we're here, let's open up this index.html just so we can see it and go back to it frequently. Here we have our HTML and here we have our browser with that index file. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a nav bar at the top. If you're using Bootstrap, giving it the class navbar brand will make sure that it is aligned to the left with uh, proper padding and margin. And you can write whatever you want in here just to title your page in a navbar. I'm gonna call it Carla Codes and let's give it some style. Let's give it a background color and I really like teal, so I'm gonna give it a teal background color, and I'm gonna make the font white. I think that's a good combination. So let's say both of these, refresh our browser, looks great. Now let's write uh, a title and let's put our run button in. So to do that, I'm gonna create a div, I'm gonna call it title. And inside, we're gonna put an H1, and this is the first thing the user is going to see when they go to your page. So I'm gonna call it Try It Yourself Editor. Underneath, I'm gonna put a P tag, and inside that, I'm gonna put some additional information about the website we're building. You can use an input uh, and give it the class of a button and you just give it a value of on click and with that you can pass in the function, the JavaScript function that you want the button to execute.
Capital R. BTN and BTN Primary are two bootstrap classes. BTN Primary will make a nice blue button. And on click, we want this to run our code. We want to take, we want it to take the code that's in the editor and display it in the second window, the second box. So here we're gonna put our function. We're not gonna put it in yet because we have not made or named that function. All right, let's save it. Let's see what it looks like right now. Awesome. Let's center this out a little bit. It looks a little clustered over there on the left. Let's make a class called title. And let's text align to the center. And let's give it a margin on the top and bottom of 40 pixels. Refresh our page, and looks a lot better. So now we want to have two boxes, one on the left where you can type your code in, and one on the right that displays the code. So the best way to do this is we're going to make one parent div, and we're gonna give it the class name of, let's say, content, since that's where all the content of the page is going to be. And inside of this, we're going to put three items. Actually, it's gonna be the text area that's on the left. We're gonna have a little arrow icon in the middle and then the resulting box on the right. So over here, we're gonna make a text area. We're gonna give it a class name of box. And an ID, we're gonna call this input. This is how we are going to gather what is inside this text area in our JavaScript function coming up. And inside of this text area, let's put some default text that says, write your code here. So why did we have to write it as an HTML comment? Well, if we do not write it as an HTML comment, the function is going to pick it up and it's going to assume that it is plain text and it's going to display it, but you don't want to display it. So let's save that. Now let's add an arrow. A div with a class of arrow. And here we're going to use an alt code. So an ampersand pound two seven capital A one semicolon. And here we want a box with our resulting code. So we're gonna make a div, the class equal to box, and ID of output. Awesome, let's save this. And when we refresh our browser, you're going to see that nothing's really gonna happen. You're just gonna see our text area and our arrow. Oh no, something must have gone wrong there. Oh, I forgot, sorry. It's ampersand pound x 27A1 semicolon. Save that. Much better. So now what we need to do is style it. So first, let's take care of, of the box themselves. The boxes, sorry. So I wanna give each one a width of 40% of the page. So we, have, we still have space around it. We're gonna give it a border, let's say two pixels, solid and gray. And let's give it a border radius. Six pixels should be good. We need a height, 400 pixels. And this is important. We need to set resize to none. This is because, and I haven't saved this, saved this yet. 
we are resizing our text area and we don't want to be able to do that. We want it to be solid. So we're going to save this and oh, let's set the background color to white. And let's refresh. Awesome. Except right now it's vertical and we don't want it to be vertical. We want it to be left to right. So let's fix that. We're going to find this parent content div. And we are going to define it as a flex box. So display. Oops. What this is going to do is use a uh, flex box as the display and it will automatically uh, put everything in a row. And we're going to want to align all of the items to the center. And so let's save this, refresh. So one thing we forgot we need to add justify content space around. So that means that it is going to evenly divide the excess space around the items within this parent uh, flex container. Much better. So right now it looks a little bland. Let's add a background color to the page and let's add a shadow on these boxes. So going to Take the body and I'm going to set the background color to, I like Azure. Let's use that one. And refresh. Oh, did I not save it? Ah, we actually need to set this to important. So that overrides uh, any bootstrap library that is uh, making the background white. Looks great. Now let's add a shadow. So we're going to add a shadow to our box class and we're going to use box shadow. So let's set 10 pixel horizontal length, 10 pixel vertical length, blur radius of 25 pixels and a spread radius of zero pixels. And to set the color, we're going to do a nice gray and I just use an online hex color picker, B8, B6, B8. It's a pretty nice color. Great, let's save it and refresh. Awesome. Now let's do the JavaScript. Oops, I think I made a little mistake here. Where's my body? Oops, let's add in a body. Seems like I forgot. Perfect. So now underneath our HTML, we're going to add a script tag and we're going to set the type equal to text JavaScript. And inside it's going to be really, really simple function. Let's call it try it. And we're going to get our code from one box and then display it in the other. So we're going to make a variable called code and we're going to equal it to the document. So our HTML, get element by ID. And we want to get things from the input from this box. So we're going to get it from the element with an ID input dot value. So the value inside of that element. And then we are going to set this value in our div with ID output. And to do that, we're going to document, get element by ID, output, inner HTML. So we're setting the, the HTML inside of the output equal to code. So when you write 
HTML, CSS, and JavaScript here. We're just taking that string and we are literally pasting it inside of this div. And the web page is then displaying it. So let's save it. Let's refresh here. And let's try typing something. Let's say H1. Hi, I'm Carla. Let's click run. Oh no. What happened? Let's see. We're gonna inspect. Let's go to our console. Hmm, no errors. Let's go back and see what went wrong. Oh, I found what's wrong. We made our function, but we never added it to our button. So let's add it now. save it. Let's refresh our page and let's try again. Oops, another quick mistake. Forgot to add the parentheses. Now let's try it. Awesome, it works. We now have an H1 tag and it's also even using the bootstrap styling but it looks a little close to the border. So let's add some padding. So we're gonna see our box and we're gonna add padding and five pixels should be enough. We're gonna save, let's refresh. I'm gonna paste that same example and we're gonna click run. Looks a lot better. You can add just about anything you want in here, including P tags, You can add inline CSS as well, and you can make just about anything you want in here. If you wanna take this a step further and challenge yourself, see if you can make this text box look like VS code and add line numbers on the left. There are even some pre-built solutions out there that you can also import. I hope you found this helpful and I will link the GitHub repository in the description. Let me know if there's anything in particular you want me to make and like and subscribe for more content.